Good evening. It is Sunday, August the 7th, about 8.35 p.m. This is Shea Gibson with Weatherflow and Wind Alert bringing you a Chucktown Wind Report as things get a little bit interesting in the southeast as we go into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So let's dive right in and talk about what's going on looking at the surface map. We have a front that's stalled over the North Carolina-South Carolina border. That is not going to be going anywhere because it can be trapped from high pressure to the north and Bermuda high pressure out in the Atlantic. That's going to be bringing in the southerly flow. This high pressure is bringing down a northerly flow. And when these boundaries get caught in between two high pressures, they sort of get sandwiched and they start to ripple. This is what's known as an undulating front. So that's what we're going to have in the southeast for the next couple of days or so as this front slowly fizzles out. We also have a very stagnant pattern going on in the northeast Gulf of Mexico with low pressure that is going to be staying inland. The National Hurricane Center did have a little bit of interest in this, now back down to 0% for a chance of development since low pressure is expected to stay inland uh, just along the northern Gulf states here. Uh, low pressure will be drifting back to the west and then increasing the rainfall totals for this area here. Uh, it looks like we've already had about 15 inches of rainfall just south of Tallahassee and we're expecting 13 to 14 inches more. In fact, if we look at the WPC chart for this, we can see that the rainfall totals are pretty steady. Uh, there was a higher amount a little bit further to the east. Now they're spreading this rain further out to the west into Louisiana. So we also see this moisture train up into the Appalachian Mountains and that is going to be also due to that Bermuda High pushing those southerly winds into the coast and pushing some of that rain up and around. There's also a low here that's going to be helping to drive that rain up the Appalachian Mountains. So uh, that'll make the connection with that front that stalled out in the area too and that'll continue the rain train up through this area. So it looks like the, for the coastlines, we look to be the driest overall with maybe an inch or two of rain, but that could change as time goes on. We've already, we've already started to see these other colors, these purples start to move up. That's about two to two and a half inches of rain, start to push up through Georgia and even in the parts of Southern South Carolina. So we'll have to keep an eye on this next day or two. If the low lifts a little bit further up into Georgia, we could see more of this rain pushing up into South Carolina. The further away that low is removed, the less rain chance that we'll get. We could see some, some moisture making it up uh, from uh, here to the mid-state South Carolina. So these areas could be become more saturated, but for right now the coast looks to fare at the best for South Carolina and North Carolina for that matter. Uh, Taking a look at SV, WSV3, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on down there in the Gulf. Here's the low here. It was a little bit further east next to Jacksonville. Now it's jogged off to the west and it's going to continue to jog to the west across the northern panhandle of Florida over towards the Emerald Coast. So that's kind of what the uh, gist is in the Northeast Gulf. Let's take a look at data scope and kind of get an idea here of what the gradient's already starting to show. Uh, the southeast gradient here off of Georgia at Gray's Reef, 18 to 21 knots. And even if we go a little bit closer in, we see Tybee Island. Tybee, we had a little bit of, further of a south-southeast gradient. Uh, south-southeast wind is kind of a typical direction for sea breezing there, but it's more of a south wind. So you can tell that that gradient is starting to make its way up. In fact, overnight with that front being to the north, we'll probably see some overnight jetting. Now, even getting to Charleston, we can see the winds already starting to turn south-southeast. Even at Folly Beach, we're seeing southeast flow. If you remember correctly, for Folly Beach southeast, you're not going to see high numbers because of the spire at the end of the pier that blocks the sensor there. So if you're looking for it, the, the actual directions and the speeds are going to be southeast wind. Sullivan's Island actually picks up that speed very well, and Isle of Palms does too. The Fort Sumter Front Range Light always does a good job on southerly winds, so check those out. As far as the rain forecast is going to go for tomorrow, we're looking at the gradient increasing over the entire southeast region, up at least until Charleston, maybe even up through Georgetown and Myrtle Beach. So we're expecting about 14, 18 knots off of a south, southeast or southeast wind tomorrow. But with that does come some additional chance of rains and showers from that onshore flow. As we get into Tuesday, we see the numbers probably drop down a little bit since that low is going to be further removed to the west. So we're looking at about 12 to 16 knots from the south, southeast direction there. Uh, as we head into Wednesday, we'll probably see the Bermuda High build back into the coastline a little bit to get those numbers back up from the south, at least uh, 13 to 17 knots. We'll raise it up just a little bit uh, and kind of go there cautionary and start, try to err on, uh, um, err on the side of caution by, by calling it more of a lower uh, wind speed for Wednesday. So that's, um, that's what's going to be for the Chucktown Wind Report. Now, taking a quick look at the tropics, we do have one tropical wave out here, disturbance number two, the very low percentage of 10% chance in the next 48 hours and 20% chance in the next five days, expected to head to the north-northwest and eventually to the north. And that's going to be curving around that Bermuda Ridge that's out there now. So the Bermuda high pressure, it's going to follow this track and, and move on out. And it also with that 
that sort of undulating cold front that's laid across the southeast, that'll pick it up as well. So I'm expecting whatever happens here with this system to uh, sort of get pulled to the north and then pulled off to the northeast in time. So here's that blob that is associated with disturbance number two. It looks like it's trying to flare up a little bit. This low is actually at the mid-level is about 500 millibars. And if it does flare up and it gets some more convective features around it, we could see a surface low develop. That would give it a tropical characteristic. But right now it is encountering a little bit of shear from the south and it's getting a little bit of cross shear as well. There's a little bit of an upper low, a little upper trough right through here. So that's what's going to give this some guidance up towards the north-northwest. And then in time, it'll get caught up along that boundary and pulled away to the northeast. So we're sort of watching this trough right here. We're watching to see if this system's going to follow along the edge of that. We don't think it's going to be any immediate threat to the coastline of the southeast United States. But one thing to be looking for is a building swell. So the National Weather Service did mention that we could see five to six foot swell along the beaches, uh, or at least just offshore. By the time it gets to the beaches, it could be a little bit lower than that. So looking at chest ahead high swell building this week with the southeast wind, it may be a little bit bumpy out there, but at least there's something uh, on the horizon. As far as temperatures go, it looks like we're going to be staying in the low 90s. So we get a break from all that major heat that we had in July. Uh, temperatures have been a little bit more pleasant, at least low 90s to upper 80s. So we'll continue to see that pattern. As time goes on, our, water sea, our sea surface temperatures are 87.3 degrees, and I think that will do it for this version of the Chucktown Wind Report. Until next time, thanks for watching.